Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I wanted to tell you about some books that I have been working on in my job at a publisher's. So for those of you who don't know, I work in publishing. I work for Bonnier Books UK as an assistant editor um, on the imprints of Zaffa and Manila Press. So every now and then I do a video and tell you about some of the books I have been working on um, because obviously I spend a lot of time reading stuff for work and a lot of time working on books um, for work that I don't really get another opportunity to talk about on my channel um, because at the time when I originally first read them, um, they're usually many, many months of publication. Um, so I wanted to tell you about some books today that I have been working on over the last year or more. Um, so these are sort of books published from like October 2020 to April 2021. So some of these are out already and some of these aren't. But I just wanted to tell you about a few of the books that I've been working on, um, all of which I really enjoyed and I am excited to talk to you about. So the first book I want to mention is The Wreck by Meg Keneally, which came out back in October. And this is a historical fiction novel. This follows a woman called Sarah, who after being caught up in a kind of failed rebellion in England, um, ends up stowing away on a ship that is going to Australia and builds herself a new life in the colonies. And it's all about um, her finding her way in this new world um, and meeting other people in Australia. It is really engaging, very atmospheric with like little mysteries and twists and turns um, and just the kind of historical fiction that I like. I think if you're interested in those more kind of like adventure led historical fiction novels then this is one you'll really enjoy. I also worked on The Winter Promise by Rosie Goodwin which is a saga novel that came out in October. Saga if you don't know is a genre of kind of very commercial female led historical fiction um, and this novel The Winter Promise follows um, a family, a brother and sister, what happens after their parents die. He ends up getting falsely accused of thieving and sent on a transportation ship to Australia and the sister ends up working as a kind of ladies companion in the house and we follow these siblings trying to get back to each other. Rosie Goodwin's stories are very gritty and very warm and there's a lot of like misery and um, wonderful Victorian drama along the way but nearly always a happy ending which I do really enjoy. Also in October we had A Christmas to Remember by Anton de Bet. This is the third book in a commercial historical fiction series set in the Buckingham Hotel in the 1930s. So the series follows a group of characters in the hotel, most of whom work in the hotel but there are some guests as well. And some of the people who work in the hotel are demonstration dancers and some of them are sort of chambermaids um, and the concierge and so on. This is the third book in the series so I'm not going to tell you too much about it but it's the 1930s, war is looming on the horizon. And all the characters are going through lots of different experiences with lots of drama, dance and personal relationships along the way. How to Belong by Sarah Franklin came out in November. This is a reading group fiction novel which follows two very different women who both move back to the same small town where they used to live after having not been there for a while. Um, jo has been living in London working as a lawyer but she decides that she wants a different life and she comes back to her small town to take over the butcher's shop from from her parents but she really doesn't like meat very much and doesn't really want to be a butcher but that shop and its position in the community means a lot to her and so she decides to take it over when her parents retire and she is in need of somewhere to live and she ends up lodging with a woman called Tessa who has also recently come back to the village and we know that she had a different life in Bristol that she is running away from. It is a incredibly powerful beautiful novel it is a wonderful story about friendship um, and about coming home, about what it means to belong, as the title says, um, and what it means to find a place for yourself in the world. Sarah Franklin writes those kind of books which are both quiet and immensely powerful at the same time. I feel like How to Belong is a fairly booktube book that quite a lot of people in this corner of the internet might enjoy, and I'll leave a link with more information down below. Next, another saga book, The Glasgow Girl at War by Eileen Ramsey it was released in December. And this is a book set kind of in the 1930s to the 1950s, before and after the Second World War, following a young Scottish woman called Fenelith who decides that what she wants more than anything else in the world is to be a lawyer and to be the first female advocate. And so it's all about her trying to make it as a lawyer in what is in the 1930s and 40s very much a man's world, as well as following her romantic relationships and what happens when World War II begins and how that affects her career. 
Eileen Ramsey writes really powerful sagas, often focusing on young women who want to do jobs that were not considered acceptable for young women to want to do at the time in which the book is set, which is something that I really enjoy about working on her books. Moving into 2021 releases, I also wanted to mention The Captive by Deborah O'Connor, which came out on the 7th of January. This is a sort of concept-led thriller, which is set um, a little bit of time in the future, so in the near future, sort of like five, ten years in the future, where the government in England has decided that the prison system does not work, so there is a new system now for justice, where instead of someone being sent to a prison if they commit a crime, that person is um, put in a prison cell inside the home of the person they inflicted the crime on. So we're following a woman called Hannah whose husband was murdered several months ago um, and the man who has been convicted of the murder of her husband, Jem, comes to live in her house in a prison cell and she is responsible for um, his punishment. And then one day Jem tells her that he didn't do it and she starts to think that things might not be as simple as they originally seemed and everything goes on from there. This is a very very character-led and concept-led thriller. It is all about the relationship between these two people stuck in this house but at the same time being a very concept-led and character-led book it is also immensely exciting and gripping. Like when I'm working on a book for work I very often end up reading them twice and genuinely like the first time I read this it was immensely gripping. And then the second time I read it, even though I knew what was going to happen, even though I knew the mystery and where the plot was going, it was still intensely gripping. And I feel like that's probably like the best, the best way to explain how good a thriller is, is if even reading it and knowing the story is still immensely gripping. <laughs> Another saga novel that also came out on the 7th of January was A Woman's Courage by S Block. This is the third book in a saga series set in the Second World War, following on from Keep the Home Fires Burning and A Woman's War, which in turn followed on from um, the TV series Home Fires, which was on several years ago. So I won't say too much about this because it's the third book in a series, but basically each book in the series follows different characters in this um, small town in Cheshire called Great Paxford, um, following their different relationships um, and how they are getting on during the Second World War. And the series is all about women's experience during the Second World War, but also about that kind of community experience and all the people who are brought together by this conflict. The next book I want to mention is being published under the imprint Manila Press rather than Zaffa, and that is The Long, Long Afternoon by Inga Vesper, which came out on the 4th of February. This is a reading group historical fiction novel, but it's also a crime mystery novel set in California in the 1950s. And the book looks at what happens when a woman called Joyce, who looks contented, has, a, you know, a husband, children, a very big, nice house, plenty of money, what happens when she one day disappears, leaving nothing but a blood stain in the kitchen, and everyone is trying to work out what's going on. So the book is split between three perspectives, Joyce's, and also two people who are trying to work out what happened. One of them is a detective who is on the case and trying to track down Joyce and find out what happened, and the other is Ruby, who is the cleaner of Joyce's home um, who has come to know Joyce fairly well um, and feels like she might have a slightly better clue of what might have happened to her than anyone else. And everything goes on from there. It is a book with a mystery at its heart but it's also very much a book about social issues. It is a book about racism, about gender, about social change and people refusing to stay in the boxes that society has put them in and it's a very rich, atmospheric, compelling novel. Another book I would say is a very, very, very booktube friendly book. It is a book that I think probably a lot of people on booktube would really enjoy and it just hits that perfect balance between mystery and kind of um, reading group historical fiction which I really enjoy. I have another saga novel to mention and that is in fact another book by Rosie Goodwin, An Orphan's Journey, which comes out in February. This book follows two sisters, Pearl and Eliza, um, and what happens when they are at a young age left at the workhouse by their family because their family can't afford to feed them anymore. Um, but they are chosen for a scheme sending orphans across the sea from England to Canada to start a new life. And they head over to Canada um, and find jobs over there. And it's about them finding a new life for themselves over there and what happens as they grow up as well. The next book I want to mention is Trust Me by T.M. Logan. This is a thriller that is coming out on the 18th of March. Trust Me is all about this one chance moment which sparks off a massive series of events. So our main character Ellen is on a train one day when 
someone sits down opposite her who is a very young mother with a baby. She asks Ellen if she will hold the baby while she goes to make a phone call and then she doesn't come back, she just gets off the train and leaves the baby with Ellen. So Ellen is now randomly stuck with a child who she's never seen before and has no idea what to do, but she does find that the woman has left behind her rucksack, on top of which there is a note which says, please protect Mia, don't trust the police, don't trust anyone. And everything just goes on from there in so many directions with so many twists and turns that you could not predict. One of the things I really enjoy about working on TM Logan's writing is that you just can't predict what's going to happen. Even though there are seeds thrown throughout the novel, you can just never quite predict where it's going to go. And that just makes his books very dramatic, very compelling and really, really engaging. Finally, I have four books all coming out in April. The first I wanted to mention is The Orphan of Ironbridge by Molly Walton. This is another saga novel and this is the third in a series, um, but it is a series following different characters from different generations, so I can tell you a little bit more about it. This book is set in Ironbridge in Shropshire and it is about a woman called Hetty Jones. She works as a pit girl in a mine, but through a series of coincidences ends up possibly having greater prospects in life. And it's about her kind of rags to riches story about her relationship with two very different men in her life and also about her relationship with several characters who you have seen in the previous two books in the series. Um, so I'll link more b down below about The Orphan of Ironbridge and um, the first two books in the series are The Daughters of Ironbridge and The Secrets of Ironbridge. Also coming out in April is Summer in Greece by Patricia Wilson. This is an escapist commercial women's fiction novel set partly in England and partly in Greece. We're following a woman called Shelley and one day she discovers in the spare room in her home um, lots of old tapes that belong to her great-grandmother um, and as she listens to these tapes she discovers that these tapes are recordings of her great-grandmother telling the story of her life and specifically her experiences during the First World War where she worked as a nurse which ended up taking her to Greece and we're finding out what happened in the past. Shelley is kind of using that past experience to um, learn how to move on with her life in the present. Another book I wanted to mention is The Mistake by Katie McMahon which is coming out at the end of April. This is a very Leanne Moriarty-esque book, one of those books that strikes that perfect um, middle line between thriller and commercial women's fiction. It's about two sisters, Kate and Beck, um, who have very different lives. Beck's life looks very much together on the surface. She is married, she has several children, she has a big house, her and her husband have a lot of money. Everything seems fine and perfect and very, very conventional, except the Beck isn't always that happy. Things are slightly going wrong for her husband at work and then she meets a younger man who she becomes very attracted to. Meanwhile, her sister Kate is living alone and has done for some time, but at the very beginning in the book she meets a man for the first time in a while, begins a new romantic relationship, except that her new boyfriend Adam doesn't seem to be telling her the truth about everything and one of these sisters is definitely about to make a big mistake and everything goes on from there. It's a very intriguing and dramatic book with a lot of twists and turns but it's also immensely funny um, and the narrative voice especially of Kate is just wonderful. The final book I wanted to mention today is Hope Nicely's Lessons for Life by Caroline Day. This book is coming out in ebook and in audiobook at the end of April, on the 29th of April but it's not coming out in hardback until um, July. Hope Nicely's Lessons for Life is a coming and age story and we're following a young woman called Hope Nicely. She's 25 years Years old. In the very beginning of the book, Hope joins a new writing group. Hope has fetal alcohol syndrome, um, which has affected her throughout her life. She lives with her adopted mother, Jenny Nicely, but she has always wondered about her birth mother, so she decides that she wants to try and track down her birth mother and that maybe starting to write about her life will help her think things through. Um, but then her mum, Jenny, falls ill and everything kind of goes on from there. I don't come across that many books with neurodiverse protagonists um, and this one is definitely a gem. The book deals with so many complicated issues and is, as I said, a coming of age novel, but it's also a novel about like writing and the writing group at the heart of this book is a really enjoyable thing to read about. This I would say is another very booktube friendly book. I can imagine a lot of people on booktube are really, really enjoying this one. So there we go, that's all I wanted to say today. Um, just a handful of books that I have been working on lately. Um, please do let me know if you've heard of any of these books, if if you read them what you thought of them I would absolutely love to know and that's it for now thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video